in the damp silence of a Danish bog, time stood still. For 5,200 years, a man's body lay preserved in the acidic peat. His skull shattered, his life violently ended. He was buried not with honor, but with mystery. No name, no monument, no clue who he was or why he was killed. That is, until now. Recent advances in forensic archaeology, isotopic analysis, and DNA technology have unearthed the truth about one of Europe's oldest unsolved murders. Known only as the Vitrup Man, this prehistoric individual is finally telling his story through the science embedded in his bones. In this video, we journey into the Stone Age, through the muddy bogs of Northern Europe, and into the heart of one man's brutal death and the hidden world it reveals about his people, his killers, and the society that buried him. One, the discovery in the bog. In 1915, peat cutters working near Vitrup, Denmark, stumbled upon something strange in the soggy earth, a human skull fractured and stained. Next there were leg bones, a wooden club, and fragments of birch bark. At first, it was believed to be a recent burial, possibly a forgotten crime scene. But the peat's natural preservative properties told a different story. The remains were thousands of years old. Over time, archaeologists confirmed this was one of the earliest known bog bodies in Scandinavia, dating to around 3,200 BC, during Europe's Neolithic period. Even after a century of being unearthed, the Vitrup man's identity remained elusive, pushing scientists to apply modern tools in hopes of uncovering long-lost answers to a mysterious fate. Two, the condition the body tells a violent tale. The Vitrup man skeleton was far from complete, but what remained painted a clear picture of violence. His skull bore multiple blunt force fractures, likely caused by a heavy object. The wooden club found nearby matched the shape and weight of the blows. It wasn't an accident. This was a deliberate killing, likely an execution. There were no grave goods, no careful burial posture, and no sign of family nearby. Instead, his body was scattered and submerged in peat, a treatment that archaeologists now recognize as ritualistic disposal. The absence of ritual offerings and formal burial rites deepens the suspicion that his death wasn't just a crime. It was a communal act of exclusion, punishment, or sacrifice. 3. The bog is a place of death and mystery. Bogs were more than wetlands to ancient Europeans. They were liminal spaces, symbolic boundaries between worlds. In the Stone and Bronze Ages, Bogs were used for offerings of gods, burials of the outcast, and even ritual sacrifices. Across northern Europe, dozens of bog bodies have been found, often showing signs of violent death. The Vitrup man fits this pattern, suggesting his murder was not just personal, but ceremonial. The lack of clothing, the blunt trauma, and the isolated setting all point to a community decision to remove him permanently. In these sacred wetlands, life and death blurred. The bog became a courtroom, altar and grave, all in one, hiding truths beneath layers of silence and mud. Four, what the bones reveal about his life. It wasn't just a violence that told a story. Forensic anthropologists used bone density and wear patterns to study Vitrup man's life. He was in his 30s or early 40s. His bones suggested a physically active lifestyle with signs of stress from carrying heavy loads and walking long distances but there were no signs of malnutrition or disease. He was healthy at the time of death. His teeth were unusually clean and strong, suggesting a diet rich in meat and protein, uncommon for Neolithic farmers. This suggests he may have held a unique status, perhaps as a tradesman, spiritual wanderer, or intermediary between different cultural groups spanning large regions. Five, isotope analysis reveals a shocking origin the real breakthrough came from isotope analysis, the study of chemical signatures in bones and teeth that reflect geography, diet, and water intake. To everyone's surprise, the Vitrup man wasn't local. His isotopic profile didn't match Denmark at all. Instead, it pointed to a coastal region of Norway, hundreds of miles away. This man had traveled a vast distance during his lifetime, perhaps on foot or by boat, to end up in a Danish bog. His mobility across prehistoric Scandinavia proves that early humans were far more interconnected than once believed, carrying goods, ideas, and identities across vast landscapes of shifting power and belief. 6. DNA unlocks ancient population links. 
With ancient DNA now viable in some preserved bones, researchers extracted samples from Vitrup man's femur and teeth. Genetic testing revealed a blend of European hunter-gatherer and early farmer ancestry, a mix common in coastal Scandinavia at the time. But what stood out was a rare mitochondrial haplogroup, one found today in small populations of Norway and Iceland. He wasn't just a traveler. He represented a migratory bridge between two Neolithic cultures, the settled farmers of Denmark and nomadic coastal groups of Norway. His presence was evidence of early pan-Scandinavian interaction, far earlier than previously believed. Seven, was Vitrup man a stranger or a threat? The cultural clash between settled Neolithic farmers and roaming hunter-fisher communities was growing during Vitrup man's lifetime. His Norwegian ancestry, strange dress based on pollen and textile traces, and different language or behavior may have marked him as an outsider. Perhaps he violated local customs. Perhaps he was part of a group seen as enemies or competitors for land and food. Or maybe he was a scapegoat, a human sacrifice offered to the gods to protect the community. Whatever the motive, his foreignness may have sealed his fate. Eight, the club beside him, murder weapon or ritual tool. The wooden club found near his remains was carefully preserved by the bog. It was hand carved from birch wood, balanced for both utility and ceremonial use. Experts believe this may have been a murder weapon, but also possibly a symbolic tool used in other rituals before or after the killing. Its deliberate placement beside his remains suggests intention, not carelessness. In ancient cultures, the weapon often accompanied the victim, either to bind them spiritually or as an offering to higher powers. The act may have been brutal, but also deeply spiritual. Nine, what this tells us about prehistoric justice and belief. Vitrup man's death wasn't just a murder, it was a message. In societies without prisons or written laws, justice and order were often preserved through symbolic punishment. Executions weren't just about the individual. They were warnings, community ceremonies, and appeals to gods. His body in the bog was not hidden. It was delivered to the earth in a specific place, preserved by time and ritual. This tells us that social control, spirituality, and violence were often intertwined in prehistoric Europe, long before formal religion or government. 10. His story lives on 5,200 years later. Today, Vitrup man's remains are kept at the National Museum of Denmark, where researchers continue to study his bones, tools, and soil residue for new clues. To many, he is no longer a nameless victim, but a symbol of how far archaeology and science have come in telling the stories the past tried to bury. From his DNA to the fracture in his skull, Vitrup man speaks across millennia, not in words, but in data of bones in the silence of bog. Conclusion. Vitrup man lived, traveled, and died in a world without maps or history books, but his remains tell a story more gripping than any legend. His journey from Norway to Denmark, his violent death, and the symbolic burial reflect a world of early belief systems, tribal politics, and spiritual justice, all written into the soil beneath our feet. Thanks to modern science, his voice is no longer lost. And if this story moved you or made you question what else lies buried in the past, like Comet, and subscribe for more mysteries rewritten by archaeology, DNA, and time itself, because sometimes the people we forget are the ones still whispering back.